everybody, so my name is Amelia and I'm a second year medical student. So in this video I'm going to be talking about what medical schools you should apply to if you have a low UCAT score. So one misconception with the UCAT is if you get a score at the lower end of the spectrum, you're not going to get a place at medical school. This is so far from the truth and I did not realise this and I really did not understand this when I was applying to medical school, hence why I didn't get in the first year round. So the big secret of getting into medical school with a low UCAT score is being strategic with your applications and applying to medical schools that don't weight the UCAT very highly. So let me explain this. So your application is made up of the UCAT, but also your grades, your work experience, your personal statement and the interview. So ultimately, if you have a lower UCAT score, you need to be applying to medical schools that look at your grades or your personal statement or your work experience and aspects like that of the application more than they look at the UCAT. So in this video, I'm basically going to be laying out a lot of options for you of where you can apply or alternative ways into medicine if you do have a lower UCAT score. I just want to start by telling you it is really not impossible. I had a lower UCAT score, I actually really struggled with the UCAT so if you're in that position it is so normal and a lot more people are in that position than you think. Everyone hates the UCAT. Like when I got to medical school we were talking about the UCAT, not one person likes it. So with that being said, let us have a look at all the options that you have if you do have a lower UCAT score and how you can really work to your advantage to make sure you get a place. So I'm going to start by giving some alternative routes that you can take if you do have a low UCAT score. It's not only just about where you apply to, you do have other options and that is a key thing to remember, you always have options. So obviously there are pros and cons to all options and it's just very important to keep that in mind and think about which option is the best for you. The first option is what I did to take a year out and reset the UCAT. So spend the year enjoying yourself, but also really working and improving on your application. If you're resetting the year, you've already done the UCAT once, you know what to expect. And it definitely puts you in a better position when you're sitting the UCAT the second year round, because you can learn from your mistakes from the first year, maybe start preparing earlier, prepare in a different way, focus on your technique and what you can do to be getting better and making sure you're getting the answers right more often. You've sat it once, you know what it's like, you know where you struggled last time and definitely use that to your advantage. The second option is to apply to BMAT universities. So when you're applying to medical school in the UK, there are two admissions tests that medical schools accept in the UK and they are the UCAT and the BMAT and specific medical schools accept the UCAT and specific medical schools accept the BMAT. In the UK, there are actually six medical schools that accept the BMAT and they are Cambridge, Oxford, UCL, the Imperial College of London, Brighton and Sussex and Lancaster University. So if you sit the UCAT, you can only apply to universities that accept the UCAT. And if you sit the BMAT, you can only apply to universities that accept the BMAT. And they are two completely different admissions tests. Some people choose to just apply to UCAT universities, some people choose to just apply to BMAT, and some people actually sit both tests and apply to a mixture of both. However, you do have to remember you are sitting these admissions tests while you're doing your A-levels and other parts of the application process. So just be very conscious of your workload and how much you can manage. I've never done the BMAT, I really don't know what the test is like. But if you're struggling with the UCAT, it might be worth having a little bit of a look at the BMAT and seeing what it's testing, what the questions are like, and maybe it would be a better fit for you if you're really not gelling with the UCAT. So that is definitely an option for you to look into if you are struggling with the UCAT. The third option is to study abroad and apply to medical schools that don't accept the UCAT as an admissions test or even different admissions tests. And maybe some countries abroad don't necessarily have admissions tests. It's not something I know a great deal about, so it's definitely something that you'd have to look into but it's also an option because you always have options. The fourth option is to apply to medicine through postgraduate so doing another degree and then going through a graduate scheme. Not all medical schools accept graduates and sometimes it can be quite competitive to get into but it's definitely worth looking into. I'm not going to go into the different routes too much because I do have a whole video on different routes into medicine so definitely take a look at that if you're looking at your options of how you can apply to medicine. So 
let's move on to the fifth option, which is to apply to medical schools accept low UCAT scores. So before we start, just a quick disclaimer, anything I mention in this video, make sure you do your own research and make sure you look at the entry requirements for that medical school because the application process varies year to year and what I'm going to be telling you in the next part of the video is based on the application year of 2022 and 23 so it will be slightly different and the numbers will be slightly different to the year you're applying. However, it's definitely a good indication because applications have trends and for example, the UCAT threshold for this year will be very similar to next year not the same, not exactly the same number, but it will be similar. So it's definitely a good indication to use when you are thinking about where to apply. So let's get into this section of the video. Okay, so the first medical school I want to mention in this section is Medical School of Aston. So when you apply to this medical school, you were scored on your grades and your UCAT score, and then you are ranked from obviously highest to lowest and there's then a cut off, so any scores above a certain cut off get given an interview. This is a really good university to apply to if you have very good grades, because although the UCAT score is considered in the application, it only makes up for one third of the points that you are given, and then the other two thirds are solely based on grades. So if you have very good GCSE and A-level grades, it's definitely a good medical school to apply to. So the lowest UCAT score invited for an interview in 2022 was 2,380, and they don't accept the Situational Judgment Band score of four, but they do accept a band one, two, and three. So if you have a band one, two, or three, very high grades and a score higher than 2,380 in your UCAT, you have a very good chance of getting offered an interview. So the second is the University of Exeter. Very similar to Aston, they rank your academic qualifications combined with your UCAT score to distribute the interviews. However, with Exeter, your grades actually account for three quarters of the points and then your UCAT only accounts for one quarter of the points. So it's very heavily weighted on your academic qualifications. So for Exeter, your GCSEs are only used to make sure you meet the minimum requirements. And then it's your A-levels that are given the points and used to distribute our interview. There's also a table, which I'll put on the screen now, which was released by the University of Exeter, and it shows how they distribute interviews based off your A-levels and your UCAT score. So pause this video to have a quick look at kind of how they give scores. And in 2022, no interview was given to anyone with points less than 60. So just take that table into consideration when applying to Exeter to see if you're likely to get an interview based off your UCAT score and based off your grades. The University of Exeter don't accept anything less than the second decile in the UCAT. Deciles change year to year depending on how the cohort do. But in 2022, the second decile was 2,250. So if you have good GCSEs, good A-levels and a score higher than 2,250, 50, you have a very good chance of getting an interview. So the third medical school is Keel. So on the website currently, it says that they have a minimum threshold of 2,280 for the UCAT and they only accept situational band judgment scores of one, two and three. They also require an A star AA at A level or three A's and an A in your EPQ. Keel is very different in their application because once you have met the entry requirements, they require you to fill out a roles and responsibilities form and that is what dictates who gets an interview. So in the roles and responsibilities form, you can mention three or four experiences you've had over the past two years and they can't be shadowing in a medical setting or involved in school or college. This is a very good university if you have very good grades and a lot of work experience to talk about because obviously interviews are distributed based off the roles and responsibilities form. So if you have a lot of strong work experience that has taught you a lot, definitely consider applying to Keele because they do weight work experience very highly. The fourth medical school I want to mention is the University of Queen's. So Queen's actually combine your GCSE grades with your UCAT score to once again rank you and use this to distribute interviews. However, they actually put very little weighting on the UCAT because the maximum points you can get for your UCAT is six and the rest is all based off your GCSE grades. I'll put the table here of the points that you get based off 
the decile of your UCAT score. So you can have a rough idea of how many points you would get for the UCAT score you've got. And then those points will be combined with the points you gain from your GCSEs. This is a great university to apply to if you have very strong GCSEs because most of your points come from your GCSE grade. Fifth medical school I want to mention is the University of Sunderland. So they actually use your grades plus your UCAT score plus an interview selection tool to distribute their interviews out. So it's very similar to Keele actually, the interview selection tool actually looks at your work experience over the past two years. So they only accept UCAT scores in the top eight deciles. So obviously this varies year to year, but last year that would have been 2,250. And they only accept situational judgment band scores of one, two or three. It's actually not clear how each part of the application is weighted for Sunderland, but because they're looking at your grades plus your use cut score plus your work experience, I don't think they weight too much to the UCAT because they're looking at so much of the application. So it's definitely a good university to apply to if you've got very strong grades and if you've got a lot of work experience as well. And obviously meet the minimum threshold of being in the eighth decile. And the last medical school I want to mention is the University of Cardiff. So let me read out this quote from the application website. It says, we prioritise attained academic qualifications, but we will use a UCAT tariff if we are oversubscribed with applicants with exceptional academic scores to help select applicants to interview. So what I can gather from Cardiff Medical School is they use your top nine GCSEs combined with your A-levels for extra points to rank you from highest to lowest, and then they apply a cut-off score on the points. And then those people who have passed the first selection then progress to the non-academic criteria so your personal statement or your academic references and the UCAT may be used as a tiebreaker if they've got lots of lots of people with very good grades. So there is a chance that Cardiff may not use the UCAT at all in the application process but obviously if there's lots and lots of people with very good grades it would be a tiebreaker. So it's definitely one to apply to if you want to go and have very good grades, if your personal statement's strong and if you have a good reference. So they are all the medical schools I'm going to be mentioning in today's video to apply to if you do have a low UCAT score. And obviously don't rule out the options I mentioned at the start as well because it's definitely very good to consider all your options before making the choice. So thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope it's been helpful and I hope it's given you some sort of insight into the options that you have when applying to medical school with a low UCAT score. Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, I would really love it if you would like and comment down below and subscribe to my channel. Thank you once again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.